And welcome to this morning's virtual bridge session. Uh, with us, we have Torsten Lauterbach from Robert Gordon University, uh, who's going to be talking about uh, moving exams online. And today's session is going to be, rather than a formal presentation, it's going to take the form of an interview. And um, I'm the guest interviewer. Um, and without um, any further ado, we'll get straight on to the questions. And the first question is, uh, Torsten, can you describe how exams were traditionally taken in your area? Yeah, um, sure. Well, uh, it's actually quite, uh, uh, quite, quite simple because <laughs> nothing, nothing much has really changed in the past hundred years. Probably how we how we run and, and organise exams. Um, you know, we um, you know, there's usually a fortnight where we run exams um, on campus in different rooms. Usually, we use uh, a big sports centre. You know, divide that into sections. There are loads of desks. I think the desks have become a little bit snazzier, a little bit. You know, the seats have got better over the years and so on. Um, a big challenge for us uh, on campus uh, is the increasing number of um, AEA students or students uh, who require uh, alternative ex uh, examination um, arrangements. Um, so, you know, these require separate rooms or separate uh, facilities. And there's, an, as I said, an increasing number of that. So, you know, when you're a, a member of staff who has to start off exams, you know, you're flipping uh, across seven or eight rooms sometimes, you know, to make sure that everybody's okay. Uh, but generally, I must say it's a well-oiled machine, you know, between the assessment office, uh, looking after exam scripts and so on, estates who set up all the rooms, uh, external invigilators that uh, come in and um, help um, staff with that academic staff as well. Um, so, you know, there's nothing really um, uh, unusual, perhaps. The, the, the exams generally last two hours, at least from a law perspective, law school perspective, but I think it's probably um uh, the, the 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 general rule for us um and then you know with regard to the exams themselves they're generally unseen exams but uh, there are also exams that come with seen uh, questions seen compulsory questions there are mcqs you know you name it but you know the setup setup really has hasn't changed much um over the over, over for many years and actually has there been any pressure to modernize that given it's been the same way for a hundred years well, there's nothing. There's nothing like a pandemic to to focus the mind a little bit, uh, to be honest. And um, I think that you know, without wanting to uh, look at questions that you might or answer questions that you might. Um, uh, answer, so I mean, even prior to the pandemic, were there any reasons why pressures were being seen on this model of of examination? Well, I think we've, we're moving so much online. Um, you know, um, some of the uh, delivery has moved online. You know, a, a lot of us have been using flipped classrooms and you know, moving lectures online, for example. Uh, and at RTU, we're delivering an online LLB. Um, you know, uh, students submit their courseworks online through Dropboxes on Moodle. You know, there's always been a discussion around, you know, do we still hang on to, uh, have to hang on to the, to the analog world when it comes to, to exams? But, you know, there hasn't really been a shift at all, uh, apart from maybe looking at assessment plans and moving away from ex exams and do different stuff like more project-based learning and, 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 and problem-based scenarios and things like that, um, um, or portfolio assessments. Um, so moving away from, from the exam um, as such. I'm not sure how my wrist would do after two hours of solid writing these days, uh, but that's... Oh, well, indeed. Yes. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, 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 yeah. Just for background, are there any um, professional body constraints as to how your students need to be examined? Well, I think um, the Law Society of Scotland still kind of likes exams. You know, they, they provide um, uh, exams themselves for, for modules and they're, um, um, through their pathway um, as well. But I think, um, generally speaking, as long as we are assessing the learning outcomes, um, of, uh, of of modules that we want students or the the the, the, the regulator wants to accreditor I should say wants to to achieve then we are pretty free um, how we can assessment so we are really using a range of different uh, assessment uh, types you know I mentioned coursework but within coursework you find poster assessment academic posters you find presentations. Of course, there are exams still quite a lot, but um, you find the traditional essay, even though it's more like a response to a problem question most of the time, you know, very advising a client, could be a letter. Um, you know, we've got the mood court that we use for assessments as well. So, you know, there's a real breadth 
Um, so just looking at this, uh, at exams as such is probably doing uh, an injustice to the to the broad palette of of uh, uh, types of assessment, both summative and formative, uh, that we're that we're trying to employ. Thank you. Now we come to pandemic uh, time. So, what reason was it decided to move exams online, and did you consider other alternatives in this situation? Well, yeah, I think um, RTU, like some other universities, you know, mulled this over uh, quite a bit before they made a decision, and probably rightly so because nobody knew at the at the time, you know, how long this would take, you know, what the what the time scale would be. But it became apparent very quickly that we that we had to move. Um, uh, either uh, by um, um, looking at different assessment modes or types of assessment, or indeed, you know, to move exams online. I, I think, from memory, there was uh, a, a discussion, you know, amongst uh, the universities as well whether you know exams should be scrapped, you know, and uh, we should look at uh, at previous attainment in order to uh, to uh, to allow students to progress. Um, but from a from a law perspective, because we have the accreditor. Um, the law society we thought well we are, we are sticking with exams um, or with assessments anyway and then it just became uh, too short notice almost to to change exams uh, we've already had them designed um, come back to that a, a, a little bit later um, as well so to to change the assessment type was really not an option uh, you know would have you know people were under enormous stress to deliver um, uh, the modules uh, that were still running, let alone thinking about different types of assessment, which would then have to be run past exam examiners and so on and so forth. So you know the whole litany would have uh, would have um, would not allowed, I think, to to follow through. Uh, as as as, uh, as you suggested, we we considered alternatives. You know where, where coursework could be used, but um, you know by and large, I think in the law school and at least we we stuck with uh, the the exams that we have. Uh, that we had and modified maybe the the task a little bit to uh, to to move away from pure not have, not many of our exams do that uh, encourage students to regurgitate uh, information without thinking about it but you know what I mean just changing the the instruction perhaps with regard to exam questions uh, a little bit in liaison with external examiners where that was necessary okay thank you um so what were the practicalities then of moving exams online? Oh, where, where do we start, um, Jason? Um, uh, once we desire, uh, once the university decided to move online, uh, it became clear that um, Campus Moodle was the, uh, the the vehicle, if you like, to to um, to, to make that possible. Um, students are familiar with uh, with Campus Moodle, you know, with the Dropbox um, scenarios where they find their coursework assessments or whatever assessment it might be, where they submit their assessments. Um, um, so that was a, uh, that was a, 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 an attractive um, platform for us to, to use. You know, where we set up, as I said, drop boxes. Um, we could set up specific forums where we give students guidance. That's another question I think that might forthcom be forthcoming a little bit later on what that guidance would, would be, uh, where students could also ask questions because there were, of course, many concerns. Um, it became, of course, also clear that. Um, the exams were now open book exams, which um, you know brought a challenge with it, um, and uh, that required uh, you know a conversation with students on on um, you know, you know on um, beware of their uh, final assessments going through Turnitin. Um, so you know um, all of these things had to be considered. Um, the students were getting extra time, uh, so instead of two hours, they now got three hours seems to be a little bit arbitrary how we came to that decision but i think you know it was just out of um trying to reassure students you know that you know just because the process is slightly different you know we still give you enough opportunity to to do yourself justice uh, in in this um assessment also being of course um, wise to uh, the uh, to the to the to the fact that a lot of students were now sitting at home well they may not have uh, a lot of quiet time during an exam for example there might be other uh, challenges for them uh, to be met as well so we felt extra time uh, would perhaps um, alleviate some of those um, uh, some of those other aspects that um, impede students to to take the exam and then of course we also had to uh, look at uh, AEA students you know uh, students requiring alternative uh, arrangements 
how we deal deal with them. So it was it took a, took a while to move all that um, online, mm -hmm. and there were loads of um, aspects that we had to consider in order to make sure that we um, you know that we um, cover every angle, if you like. But it was tricky. Okay, then. So to understand, then there was a set time slot. All students were taking it, other than those with um, uh, particular arrangements, all sitting yeah. at the same time yeah. uh, by logging on to Canvas. And yeah. all, all, one of the questions that always comes back, of course, is uh, how do you ensure the person who's taking the exam is the candidate? And um, did you get much pushback or feedback in that sort of area? We trust our students. Yes, it's uh -huh. that. the short answer. Um, you know, again, I think the time scale was against us to um, to, uh, to to look at um, software options that might be available. You know, I've done a little bit of um, research in inverted commas on that um, with a view to next semester, which still probably find ourselves in in the same situation. And there may well be opportunities or options that the university can look at, but it's probably then also becomes a, a budgetary uh, question too. You know, but uh, the, I've got it here in big letter, letters, authenticity, that's a, you know, and student identity, that is of course a, a, a challenge. Um, but, um, you know, at the, at the moment, I think we're, uh, we're using the, um, the process that we have, you know, with regard to uh, academic integrity uh, policies that we have. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, at the moment, the exams are still ongoing. So I don't really have any data or any inkling on, you know, whether that has become an issue. Uh, for us, um, so at the moment it all seems to be um, okay. Uh, but I, I, I take your point. You know that as a, you know, if, if we stick with online exams, that has we need to look at that a, a lot more carefully. Thank you. And moving on to the next question, then. So practicality dealt with. Uh, how did the guidance around online exams come together in your case? Well, um, there were there were many sources uh, for 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 guidance. On the one hand, you know we had. Um, um, guidance coming to us from um, the, the university management group, the top level, uh, together also with Delta, the Department of um, Enhancement of Learning, Teaching, and um, uh, and Access. You know, so that's uh, Delta is probably the the, uh, the most important um, area where guidance always uh, comes to us first. But then the schools themselves they drew up guidance as well. You know, around their uh, school management um, groups, uh, staff also chipped in. Um, then there were study skills who were also uh, adding into the mix. So it was almost, you know, I don't mean that flippantly, uh, but it was almost a, a case of perhaps sometimes too many cooks, um, you know, to, to tie all that together and communicate it to students uh, consistently. Um, that was certainly a challenge, especially because, you know, we're inundated with questions from students as well, you know, who sought that reassurance, sought clarity, and uh, rather than us jumping the gun, we really had to take our time and uh, make sure that the message that we put out, you know, per exam, per module, uh, per course was consistent and plausible uh, and fair, equitable, um, whatever you want to uh, label it. But that was, you know, that, you know, the guidance itself that took some time, of course, to uh, get together. And then, you know, there's always a technical issue that you only become aware of once the exam actually starts, um, you know, but, um, you know, there's some, uh, there's a lot of ad hoc support from uh, ITS, as well as our online learning developers who are also at hand at the start of the exam, you know, if there's any issue, you know, there's flexibility. Uh, we notice this is a reaction to a crisis rather than something that is um, planned at length uh, before the event. So, you know, I think there's that flexibility and that understanding on both sides, both from the students and the staff, uh, that you know uh, we are all uh, part of the of the same process here, and we want everybody to do as well as they can. Just a, wee, a supplementary, then, could you uh, is, is there a summary of the sort of student anxieties that were typically coming up? Well, yes. Um, what happens if you can't um, see the exam because the Wi-Fi in in the in the place where I'm is unreliable? Um, you know, so that was a, a query uh, that often came up. Um, you know, of course, at the end of the exam, when everybody uh, submits uh, at, at the same time, you know, sometimes uh, upload times take a little bit longer. Um, you know, um, at, the, at the beginning, uh, you know, I think our guidance said that students would have 15 minutes uh, to upload, but we quickly extended that to 30 minutes just to give that 
buffer zone a little bit more breadth, um, if you like, and uh, that helped. You know, we, we advise students to save the final version, um, uh, and that time uh, and date, of course, would then indicate, uh, you know, when the exam actually was completed by the student, and if that was within a time frame, that was okay, irrespective of whether they uh, managed to upload it a little bit later on. Um, so, you know, so again, you know, these things only became apparent when they when they occurred. But I I, I think we reacted to that in a very, very accommodating, flexible, and also professional way um, to make sure that nobody's, uh, nobody's disadvantaged. Uh, was there anything around oh, the- Another, uh, sorry, another, another query that was coming up, of course, is about referencing. You know, do we now fully need to do a full referencing as in the coursework, uh, and to which we generally responded, uh, you know, that uh, uh, still under exam conditions, of course, you know, when you quote from material, you want to acknowledge the source and so on, but full or scholar, for example, uh, or, or Harvard or whatever is being used by, by other universities, we didn't expect that. Um, I should also say that we, uh, we added a word limit to each exam question. Um, you know, uh, if it's a, a, a run of a mill paper, five, question, uh, five questions, um, answer three of those, we put a limit of a thousand words on that. Um, to maintain it manageable for us uh, from a marking perspective, but also to perhaps not to tempt students to cut and paste large, large swathes of information just to, to beef up the answer, make it look better by that. Um, so uh, we had a lot of conversations with students about that um, um, as well. So yeah, that was a question. And of course, the other question is, you know, is it now being marked uh, more harshly? Uh, just because you know we have more time and we have all these sources at our fingertips, uh, and of course the response to that is that we are, you know, we are marking fairly, rather than harshly. Uh, we're never harsh, you know. We always we are always um, um, fair, and um, of course you know it's it's we are all in the same boat uh, with regard to this experiment, for lack of a better word. We could do an entire session on the, the potential differences pedagogically and uh, between open book and closed book examination, but we'll leave that one to the side at the moment and moving on to the uh, final question of the formal questions. On reflection now, uh, what are the key challenges to overcome or have overcome and any ongoing benefits you see from the work that's been done? Well, challenges, as you mentioned, authenticity, that's that word again, and student identity, I think that's a you know, um, that's, that gives us some food for thought um, uh, going forward. Uh, designing tasks for open book exams, I think that that would be a, a, a one as well. Uh, I don't think we have the time to do that, uh, you know, fully for, for, this, for this occasion, but um, if online or open book exams were here to stay, then, you know, that requires a lot of thought, perhaps some staff development as well, um, you know, uh, making sure that we move uh, generally to, to problem-based or project-based learning um, uh, more readily or, you know, where we have, um, you know, uh, more uh, essay-type questions where students talk about the theory uh, and policy rather than advising a client, um, you know, uh, to, to, uh, to build that in our uh, teaching more directly, um, you know, uh, on, on how students need to um, engage with those type of questions rather than, you know, using it as a almost a, an information dump, uh, you know, where we regurgitate large swathes of, uh, of information. Um, so I think those would be some of the challenges. Benefits, did you ask me for benefits as well, Jason? Yeah, well, I think every challenge is to some extent a benefit as well. You know, the whole idea of designing assessments, I think uh, that will inform our discussion and underpin our discussion in the law school, certainly going forward over the next few weeks uh, in view of next uh, semester. Um, um, marking online might be you know, a little bit of a double-edged sword as well. You know, some people, some stuff like it, some um, others less so. But I think there are um, efficiencies there, uh, and uh, it can be done more effectively as well. Uh, from my perspective, um, you know, it's interesting. Um, it's very difficult to make um, exam scripts available to students and um, touch base with them if they want feedback uh, after the exam. Well, if everything is online. You know, here's it's it's very easy to do that, but that of course also means then that um, uh, all of us need to uh, put um, more detailed comments down on exam scripts. You know, and uh, treat it more perhaps 
uh, like a coursework from a from a from a marketing perspective and a feedback perspective. So there's um you know the, the whole feedback um, area is interesting as well. Um, you know we have, can go beyond a written feedback to audio and make that available to students, um, irrespective of whether they seek feedback or not. So you know just give it to them uh, if it's online anyway. Uh, using Feedback Studio, for example, and the, and the recording facility there. So, you know, I think, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of food for thought, uh, but, um, you know, uh, could, re of, of, could be of real benefit both for students, uh, but also for staff. And that feedback bit's very important. As a law student once, I do remember getting 55% on an essay I thought I deserved more on. So, I, and all that was written on my paper was 55%. And um, so I gave it back in to get further comments. And three weeks later, I got returned to me and it said 55% quite good. That's, uh, that was the, the extent of the feedback that I got. Uh, um, you, would, you would hope that, we are, that, we, that we've moved on from that. But um, looking at some of the evidence, not, not at RTU specifically, but generally also being an external examiner at, uh, at other institutions, you know, it still, it still happens. Yeah. Um, but this, this might uh, give us an opportunity to uh, to deal with that a little bit more meaningfully and, you know, give, add value really for the students, but also for our benefit uh, to, in, to the whole process. No, I, could, I, could actually, I could actually, I uh, could actually go into one of these drawers here at the desk and pull out one of the assessments that you marked about <laughs> all those many years ago and, and, and see what the feedback was like. But I, yeah. I <laughs> for the record, Torsten was once a student of mine, but um, yes. <laughs> and, uh, and, and to finish off, if, um, if things, um, uh, and let's go with some optimism, changed uh, uh, very quickly for the better, and um, at the beginning of next academic session, we were able to go back to the way things were and without restriction. Uh, do you think that the feeling among staff is that they would go back to the traditional way of delivering exams in law, or do you think that there's lasting changes to come about because of this? Well, I, I haven't had an opportunity to to talk with colleagues about that, uh, but I think these conversations will take place over the next over the next few weeks. Um, there, I think, with regard to our our practice generally, I think there there are certain things that we probably don't want to go back to. Um, and um, especially if you know if if you can't get um, students in in large numbers into campus, you know there's certainly uh, um, um, you know a, a lot of um, a discussion a lot of discussion around you know how to make the uh, contact with students meaningful uh, and uh, practical and and engaging uh, rather than you know um, getting them in for the proverbial uh, um, contract or lecture by Lauterbach uh, at nine o'clock on a Monday. Monday morning on formation of contract or whatever it might be, you know, even though it's really exciting, you know, we don't really need to get a hundred students in to deliver that um, face to face. You know, there are, there are other modes of doing that. And when students are on campus, you really want to do different things uh, uh, in, in collaboration with them rather than just, you know, having them sat in front of you uh, and listen to you. That's Probably better than Campbell on European law on a Friday morning. Uh, no, no, no. Like um, Marianthi first has got a question. I don't know, Marianthi, if you would like to unmute or and answer, ask it yourself. Panic. Um, yeah, hi. I was just uh, wondering when you were talking about the extra time for uploading, do you tell the students that they will have the extra time because they can use that as a, I have more time to do my answers as well? Well, yeah, I, I, I don't think we, we can check that, um, you know, yeah. um, and, and um, you know, I think students, at least from the from the chats I have with students um, uh, up, and, up until now, you know, students realize very quickly that three hours is quite a long time uh, to, to, to provide um, uh, exam answers. Uh, but um, if they wanted to use some of that um, 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 uploading time as part of their uh, as part of their answer, you know, they know from they know ahead that they will have the extra time for the uploading. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's just a safety net, you know, so that um, mm -hmm. you know there's um, there is this as I said, you know, this this buffer zone at the end um, yeah. where everybody wants to. Visit, uh, but um, also looking at the at the drop boxes, you know, a lot of students submit early or earlier, um, yeah. you know, before the the end of the three hours. Um, yeah. So. Really, you know, it's actually very few students who, who use 
that that half hour uh, at the end. And um, you know, uh, students who have these alternative arrangements, they have even more time um, beyond the three and a half hours, to, uh, if you like. So you know, that's really you know a, a lot. Yeah. Of mm -hmm. to no, add. thank you. Thank you. And we've got a question from Kenji as well. A lot around software, you said about turn uh, um, using Dropbox, but uh, uh, Kenji, do you want to come off mic and ask that? Uh, y yes, uh, Thorsten. So I, I was wondering, do you mandate a particular uh, word editor or word processing software for the students to use, or are they free to choose any kind of editing software that they want? Well, um, I think we, we advise them to, to, to use Word. Um, you know, just be you know, open the Word document and um, use, you know, that as a, as a, as a, as a baseline for, uh, for their, for their, uh, for their exams. Um, and then, you know, once they submitted through, uh, through Moodle, it's turned into a PDF automatically for, for uh, commenting and marking purposes anyway, which sometimes, you know, um, does away with some of the settings, you know, sometimes the PDF looks uh, markedly different uh, and a, a little bit messy really compared to the, to the, to the Word document, but, you know, that's a uh, part of the technology as far as I understand, but yeah, the, um, you know, to, I think you're, you're right. We can look at that. Uh, again, in a bit more detail, you know, and perhaps less of a uh, uh, reactive and more of a proactive uh, manner next time, uh, should that time come, actually, which comes, of course, um, in August for some of the research. And for, for some people, um, they suggest using, other institutions have suggested using Word Online as part of the Office uh -huh. 365 suite, simply because Word Online consistently saves the, the in the background, and, and so you're mm -hmm. less likely to lose uh, your work during the exam period. Um, the, the other question I, I quickly had was, now that you've moved to an open book assessment uh, within that time frame, um, and the amount that people have to write, you said there's a, a, a word limit on what they can submit. So th they don't think that because they've got extra time, they have they need to write more, um, which is a good thing. Um, but did the, the nature of the question change significantly from previous years? Now that you've moved to an, an open book format, did did you find that the, the exam questions changed? I think they will change going forward, um, Kenji. Um, I, I think, as I said, at the, at the mo for, for this time around, we didn't really have much option to change questions, uh, uh, unless you know where we found that um, one question asked students to describe something, uh, you know, which then lends itself to you know uh, to to dump a lot of information and regurgitate information to something a little bit more, you know, uh, uh, different, you know, and explain or, you know, uh, you know discuss, uh, you know, or keep in, in, in that sort of uh, way. Um, I think from a law perspective, a lot of our uh, tasks are problem-based anyway, because, you know, law is all about solving problems and, you know, problems that uh, people uh, experience, be that in contract or in whatever, um, other um, area of law. So we, we have quite a lot of applied stuff and practical um, uh, assessments also in exams, uh, generally speaking, but I think we want to do that more consistently uh, in the future uh, and move away from some of the, uh, from some of the more, if you like, descriptive uh, tasks, if we stick with, uh, uh, or when we stick with, with online or open book exams. But it generally, I think it's, it's, a, it's a good practice thing as well. Uh, to to look at um, um, exams if we stick with exams to to ask students to um, uh, to do more with the information rather than just regurgitate it um, um, for example one for one of my or the modules I was involved in um, um, I had a scene question a scene exam question which students got two weeks before the exam and that remained seen um, you know, even though the students said, well, you know, we don't really have to wait until uh, the exam to actually write the answer. I said, well, make use of the time, you know, but make sure that you, uh, you know, answer the question in a way it's, it's phrased. You know, you have to advise somebody, you have to apply the law, uh, telling me or telling the client what the law is that doesn't really uh, answer the question. So, you know, don't, um, don't feel uh, tempted to uh, just cut and paste um, information. You know, you need to demonstrate that you uh, can apply the information to the to the to the problem to the situation. You know, argue, counter argue, uh, distinguish, 
uh, court decisions from the scenario and so on. So you know, it's, there's a lot more um, to it, and um, I think we can we can do that, um, you know, perhaps more consistently across the board. But that's I think that's not an RGU thing specifically, but I think it's probably um, uh, uh, you know an issue across the board. Thanks. <laughs> And briefly, um, we have one further question, and I know it's not your area, but do you have any advice, uh, Julie, uh, Julie is asking, uh, for the asse uh, online assessment of practical work in science? Is there anything you've done that might help consideration of how to move that online? Oh dear, I throw my hands up in the air uh, on that one. I, I'm, I'm really sorry. I think, you know, but it's a, it's a, it's a, good, it's a good question. Uh, you know, and I'm, I'm aware that, you know, these kind of discussions have taken place, of course, you know, in in, in other schools uh, at RTU, but I don't really have an insight how they solve that. Um, so, you know, rather than making up an answer, I think I have to defer uh, on that. And, uh, you know, in, in, in true academic style, uh, um, it's a really contentious area, but I, I can come back to that later once I find out a bit more information. Okay, that's good. Well, we've come to the half hour mark and so with that I will give big thanks to Torsten for uh, letting us have some insight into the processes and practicalities um, and indeed reflections on how to move some very traditional uh, examinations into a different world um, and by necessity indeed. Um, so thank you very much for watching and with that I'll bring the recorded part to an end.